What's going on YouTube? It's Tej back again with another video and today we're talking about the Carolina Panthers in our 2021 NFL season preview series. We're into what week one officially week two for my Steelers but week one of the NFL preseason we're getting so close guys so hopefully you all enjoyed today's video if you do please hit that like button it would help me out a ton and if you're new to the channel seriously it would help me out a ton if you hit that subscribe button as well and give me your Panthers takes down in the comment section how many wins do you project this team getting who are some x factors and what are some games you're looking forward to watch I'd love to have your perspective on this team I respond to every comment so let's talk about the Panthers down below Getting things underway, talking about this win range. Four to nine. I initially had this four to eight. It really comes down to the man that's on your screen, right? Like when you talk about the Panthers offseason, like Sam Darnold is where the, the conversation starts and ends. Um, and that's probably where it'll start and end for me going on the soliloquy. And if things don't work out with Darnold, four to five wins, right where I have him in my projection at five wins, sounds about right. And I'll kind of talk about him when we get to the X factors. But Say Matt Rule and Joe Brady are able to do something that, you know, as my reach goal says, fix him and you kind of bring him to where he was once upon a time, a top three pick in the NFL draft. If they're able to find that talent in him. They have a lot of good weapons around him, both with Christian McCaffrey and, you know, Robbie Anderson. They draft Terrence Marshall Jr. DJ Moore is fantastic. They signed David Moore. I really like the wide receiver room. And they don't really use a tight end. So it's really those four wideouts plus Christian McCaffrey uh, getting utilized. And even Chuba Hubbard as RB2. Not too bad. All that said, if they can fix what's been going on in Sam Darnold's career with those weapons, maybe this team could go 9-8. and eight. That's kind of why I did ultimately budge. I originally had it at 8 wins for that max part of the range. Did eventually give in and make it 9. This is a really interesting case study because it shows... Can a QB learn and improve out of a bad situation? And like, that sounds like, well, yeah, but a lot of times you won't see a quarterback get traits that weren't there, right? And then show you things that they previously hadn't. But maybe that's the case here. Maybe it was just that bad with Adam Case. And maybe the offensive line and the, you know, the pass catching core were that bad in New York. I will say, all that coming together definitely didn't help Sam Darnold, right? He had no weapons, no offensive line, and a bad coach. It's not even like he had one of those three components that might elevate his play. Now in Carolina, I think the offensive line's not great, but great weapons like the offensive line's calling play. So anything is possible. Additionally, I like the young players on the defense, and if they all take a step forward in year two, that definitely helps them out a ton when it comes to getting to that nine-win mark. Again, my projected win total is at five, so obviously I'm not completely sold on Sam Darnold, and I do like those second-year players, and just overall, I like a lot of the additions they made to uh, the defense draft, and J.C. Horn will talk about signing Hassan Reddick for a very low uh, contract, one-year deal. Uh, with those second-year players, I do think they are a little better on that side of the ball, but it's still not a great unit yet. Realistic goal, be competitive every game. I use this all the time in these videos, and I liken it back to Joe Judge's first year with the Giants. He won me over with his press conference, so maybe I'm a little biased. I was always rooting for the guy, even though I'm not a Giants fan. But week in and week out, until you know they upset the Seahawks, was that around week 10, week 11 of that year? Uh, that was a big win, but up until that, they were playing everybody close, despite, you know, you know Colt McCoy getting into some games, Daniel Jones not playing great, the offensive line wasn't stellar. There was just a lot of things not working in Joe Judge's favor, but he kept that team in close games. And that's something I want to see from Carolina, because that could be progress in itself. And then you could look at it and say, Darnold wasn't what we needed as a long-term answer, but we stayed competitive despite him, and it gives you a roadmap moving forward. Or maybe Darnold is pretty good, you feel like you can win with him, and you're seeing okay, we need some better cornerbacks or we need to really fix this offensive line if we're going to be a serious contender in the NFC South. So they can stay competitive, at least put you in the realm of trying to figure out what are those last couple pieces before you can make a playoff push. Race goal, of course, fix Sam Donald, right? If Matt Rule and Joe Brady can do it, they have done something that many people thought was impossible, right? And then it just solidifies Joe Brady's going to get a head coaching job next offseason. So definitely a tall task in front of them. But if there's a, a head coaching OC duo to do it, those are some of the best, you know, that's one of the best tandems you could ask to try to fix Sam Darnold. X Factors, let's go ahead and talk about Sam now. I uh, said that like I'm on a first name basis with the guy, but you know, the numbers weren't pretty last year in 12 starts with the Jets. More interceptions than touchdowns, 40.1 QBR. I mean, that is... That's rough. And then the PFF rankings, second worst passing grade, bottom four overall grade. It wasn't good. And this guy was a third overall pick. And, you know, uh, obviously I didn't have the channel back then, but, you know, Josh Allen was my number one player 
in that class. I was saying the Browns should take him number one overall. They ultimately go Baker, but uh, I had a lot of people saying and telling me back when I was in college and just people that I talked to that were you know NFL fans that I was uh, in communications with that I was crazy for not liking Sam Darnold. And you know part of it is like USC just has not, and Darnold has further moved this argument forward, but uh, Matt Leinart wasn't great. Carson Palmer had some good years. I won't take that away from him. But Mark Sanchez, Cody Kessler, you're kind of catching my drift here. There have not been a, a lot of QBs to come through USC to find some success other than Carson Palmer that immediately come to mind. Even Palmer had some up and down years. Uh, so Donald has kind of led into that argument and that was part of my hesitation when he came out of the draft class. Not that I think where you go to school dictates how good or bad you are. That's, that's just kind of ludicrous, but it's, you know, it's a spice in the mix, right? It's a part of the recipe. Um, so hopefully Darnold can turn it around this year again. There's a, a group to do it. Matt Rule, Joe Brady, that's one of the best duos you could have given him between a head coach and an offensive coordinator. They have a ton of weapons around him. And the reason I'm not completely sold is we've seen Darnold make some big flash plays. Like every once in a while, you'll see something on Twitter saying, you know, if Mahomes made this throw, the world would lose its mind. And they're not wrong, right? Like Darnold has had handful, maybe two handful of plays that make you go, Whew, God, wow, what, where has this been? But are you going to make a bet or are you going to make a big time decision? Not that we are with the Panthers, but applying this to real life situations, are you going to try to do that off of 0.1% of what you've seen? No, that's not even the exception to the rule. That's the E an exception to the rule. I mean, that is just way too much to try to lean on. That's too large of an asterisk to put your shoulder against. No shot. So will Darnold get better? Yes, I think this will be his best year of his career. But a 40.1 QBR rating and uh, you know overall PFF grade at 58.4, you know, say he gets to the mid 60s. That's right around where Teddy Ridgewater was last year. And we saw what the Panthers were last year with Eddie Richwater. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. I do think Darnold gets better this year because it's the best situation. This still might be one of the better offensive lines he's had in front of him. It's definitely the best weapons best offensive minds he's had. I am just unconvinced because I don't normally see QBs gain traits, right? Like you can get better and you can improve, become more accurate, become smarter, uh, get timing down and obviously gaining weapons helps you with all that. But gaining traits, getting better in the pocket, I don't know. I think it's a little too much of a stretch. Second X factor though, this is a guy who will help improve the play of Sam Darnold. Because like I said, the one week point that I really worry about with Sam Darnold's game is, you know, his pocket presence and that offensive line in front of him is not great other than Taylor Moten and Cam Irving might not even be starting at left tackle. I am putting him on here assuming he is the starting left tackle, but I've been hearing that uh, Moten's been getting some snaps at left tackle and that makes some sense to me. He's a stellar right tackle, so maybe you try to flip the sides, but Cam Irving was more of a fill-in player last year, therefore not enough snaps played to qualify for all these rankings, but they're all around the neighborhood of where Chukwuma Okorafor, when I did the Steelers preview video was, and that was among the worst uh, rated tackles in you know the PFF catalog. So you're hoping that Cam Irving is going to be better. I will say that 58 overall grade was the best of his career. Prior to that, he had been 44 to 47 over the four years prior. So last year was his best year as a fill-in guy, but that makes me worry that now that he's being relied on as a starter... Um, the sample size is going to be larger and the role is going to be maybe too big and he's going to slip back down in the 40s when it comes to that grading system. But I could be wrong. Maybe he takes another step forward and he gets into the mid-60s, high 60s, you know. Steady progress would go a long way, but this is a guy who has to play well, right? You need this offensive line to do its best, one, to protect Sam Darnold. We've already talked about him a ton, but Christian McCaffrey is going to be just as needy and reliant upon it. You look at the NFL and it's been pretty clear that, you know, some running backs can do a lot with a little with the offensive line, but, you know, I'm kind of thinking of Dalvin Cook when that comes to mind. But that said, overall, the offensive line and how good it is dictates how good your running game is going to be. So Cam Irving, the rest of that offensive line, Taylor Moten included, have got to be good quality players and all get better. Even Taylor Moten, they've all got to get better. Uh, Moten to prove the contract. The other four guys to just prove that they can be starters at the NFL level. And they got to help Christian McCaffrey there. And if this team can more efficiently run the football, that of course lightens the load a little bit for Sam Darnold. Overall, just makes his offense way better. And Cam Irving right now, per the Panthers depth chart, starting left tackle. So 
he is the guy to focus on there. Final X Factor is JC Horn, the guy they took with the eighth overall pick. And this is it's a big one because now, you know, I don't want to call it revisionist history because it's still fresh in people's minds, but everyone's thinking about why this team didn't take Justin Fields. And maybe they just didn't have a high, you know, scouting grade on him. And if that's the case, you just have to go with what that room saw with Fields. And because of that, they go J.C. Horn. It's not to say corner wasn't a need. Now you have Horn and Dante Jackson on the depth chart as cornerbacks one and two. I still like Troy Pride Jr. I think he could do some good things in the nickel. But overall, Horn improves that secondary, and that is a vital part. And it was one, it was probably the weakest part of that defense. Even though you could look at linebacker Shaq Thompson, definitely gave you a guy who's, who's a, he's a dude. Shaq Thompson's pretty darn good. Um, I like Dante Jackson, but he hasn't quite proven to be a number one Guy Horn has that potential. He has that ceiling. The tough part is rookie cornerbacks typically don't play well. And you've heard me say this. You've heard a lot of people say this. Uh, you can look at last year outside of Legereus Sneed, first half of the year for CJ Henderson, second half of the year for AJ Terrell. Quality cornerback play from rookies was few and far between. Can Horn be different? We'll find out. I mean, he's a good athlete. Uh, I've heard Matt Rule and uh, some press conferences at training camp talk about he's still a little handsy. He's going to get called for some penalties. That's something that we said throughout the draft process. You'd like to see that get improved. But the fact Matt Rule sees it is at least a positive sign that hopefully they're going to try to address it. So if Horn can be good, it helps this defense overall. It'll help the pass rush. I love Brian Burns. If you missed my betting uh, video about NFL awards, Brian Burns, my favorite bet, plus 10,000 for defense player of the year, sign me up. You couldn't put enough, uh, uh, enough emphasis on how much I love that bet. But J.C. Horn will help make that job easier for Burns, Reddick, Davion Nix, who was a late round pick, Derek Brown, um, Yatir Gross Matos in year two, all those, all those guys. But if Horn struggles and Darnold doesn't look good, everybody's going to look back at that eighth overall pick and see Carolina, you see, you should have gone with Justin Fields. So, of course, he has to be an X factor for all those reasons. Games to watch. We'll close this video out. Week one against the Jets. This is a duh one because it's Sam Darnold taking on his former team. These two teams are, you know, bottom quarter of the NFL and almost everybody's power ranking. So it's a relatively even matchup. It helps Carolina's at home. So, could be one that they could uh, start the year out on the right. No, week five against the Eagles again. Two teams towards the bottom of the barrel in the NFL. So another home game as well. Feels like one Carolina could come away with. Another duel between quarterbacks trying to prove they can be the starter long term. So it's really fun to look at from that perspective. And week 12 at Miami. Put this one on here because the last, you know, four, five, six games of the schedule. There's a game in Buffalo, which... And I don't feel good about that one for Carolina. And then there's a lot of division games. And I don't put division games on the games to watch because all those games matter, of course. But with Miami, again, young quarterbacks trying to prove that they can be the guy long term for their organizations. And maybe the Dolphins were really healthy last year. Maybe they have some more injuries pop up. And maybe this Panthers offense with all its you know high octane nature, those wide receivers, Christian McCaffrey, Maybe those injuries are on the defensive side of the ball for the Dolphins. This could be a game that if Carolina wins, people point to as reason to buy the Panthers next season. That's kind of why I put it here, but it's also tough because there's a lot of division games late and I don't want to include those in the games to watch. But that's going to do it for my 2021 Carolina Panthers season preview video. Tell me what you think about this team down in the comments section. How many wins do they get? Who are some X factors? What are some games you're looking forward to watch? I'd love to have your opinion. Let's talk about the Panthers down below. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that like button. It really would help me out a ton. And if you're new to the channel, want more football content in your life, please consider subscribing. That's going to do it for this video. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, my name is Tej, and I'm signing off.